Hey, Irish fans, Mike Singer and Tyler Horka here from Blue and Gold with our Thursday post Notre Dame head coach Marcus Freeman press conference reaction video. Kind of a big news item dropped. So, Tyler and I will discuss that. But before we do, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to help support what we're doing. It helps us more than you know. So, Tyler, the news is Jacob Lacey, um, which is, is this his junior, senior year now? Senior year. Senior year. Man, time has flown by. Yeah. Um, he has left the Notre Dame football program. Tell us about the details of this, what we know right now. Yeah, so we were expecting Kevin Bauman news. We were all over that. This one, I would say, is a little bit more shocking, probably to most Notre Dame fans, because this is a guy, and, and Kevin Bauman news was obviously that he's out for the season with an ACL injury, but this is a guy in Jacob Lacey who – just two games ago, had two sacks, five total tackles, received a game ball from blueandgold.com. I don't remember if he was one of the players of the game uh, from Notre Dame. They release, uh, I think it's an offensive, defensive, special teams player uh, for every game. He, he could have been that. He could have been the defensive player of the game for getting two sacks against, against Cal, really ma making some of those plays. I, I know Notre Dame had six sacks in that game, but he had a third of them, and he, he made a lot of the plays that Notre Dame needed to make to win that game and to, to get their first victory of the season. So for this guy to be leaving, it, it's a bit of a shock. He played the third most snaps among all Notre Dame defensive tackles, only behind Jason Adamalola and Howard Cross, two guys who have been having a phenomenal season in their own right. Howard Cross was leading the team in total tackles there for a little bit. So to be the third guy in that rotation which Notre Dame rotates uh, quite a bit at the defensive line they only use a, a core group of five or so guys in there as well would be Chris Smith Gabriel Rubio is starting to work into that rotation but to be the third guy in there and to play I think it's 73 snaps through four games that's not that bad so it's it's, it's a little bit of a shock but you got to think that a guy that like I said had two sacks against Cal was probably thinking why am I play, playing half as much as Howard Cross. And again, I don't want to get into Jacob Lacey's mind. If you want to get a little bit into Jacob Lacey's mind, go to his Twitter account or go to blueandgold.com where we have that tweet where he said, you know, the reasons, not, not necessarily the reasons that he's transferring, but he thanked Notre Dame and he said, I'm redshirting this season. I'm entering the transfer portal. So from a Notre Dame perspective, you lose a pretty valuable guy. Cause like I said, that was your number three defensive tackle and defensive tackle is a pretty important position, especially at a place like Notre Dame. So uh, just to give people an idea on his snap counts, he played 29 against Ohio state, 11 versus Marshall, 24 against Cal, and then just nine against North Carolina, 73 snaps on the season. Like Tyler mentioned, um, you know, played 247 snaps his freshman year back in 2019, but then didn't hit more than 170 the next two seasons. And I want to say he's kind of had some injuries that he's battled since, um, you know, before this season as well. So, yeah, kind of surprising decision, Tyler. His stats through those 73 snaps, five tackles, and then the two sacks that you mentioned that he had against Cal. So, um I feel like this is not a big loss for Notre Dame. I mean, Marcus Freeman talked about there is a great depth uh, in this interior defensive line. And uh, he mentioned two names that uh, Patrick Engel at Blue and Gold asked the question, like, who do you kind of see replacing Lacey Snaps? Freeman mentioned two names and then one guy who will come up from the scout team. Yeah, the two names are Chris Smith, the Harvard graduate transfer, who – I don't know if he's been the flashiest player for Notre Dame, but he's been pretty good. He's, he's played upward of 50 snaps. I, what is it, Mike? You have 46. 46. So you're going to see that go up a little bit, probably to Jacob Lacey numbers. And then the second guy who I've been really high on ever since he's been at Notre Dame is Gabriel Rubio. He's just a menacing looking guy in the middle of the defensive line. And that's what you want at that position. I think he played upward of 10 snaps there against North Carolina. So that's a guy that, you're just going to see the natural progression of things where Chris Smith is probably going to take on those Jacob Lacey snaps. And then maybe Gabriel Rubio takes on those uh, Chris Smith snaps. So you just kind of see a, a natural move up the ladder. But the guy that you mentioned that's moving over from the scout team is Jason Anye, who's a sophomore who another menacing guy. I think he's had some injury troubles in the past, but he's just a guy who last year you, you weren't going to see him get on the field 
at defensive tackle with Kurt Heinis, Jason Adamalola, and then these younger guys who are just now trying to get on the field now, like a Gabriel Rubio, who those two guys are in the same class. So Jason Anye could take these reps that he's getting with the actual defense as opposed to the scout team and maybe move himself into the conversation with Gabriel Rubio, where we may be sitting here in November saying, oh, there's Jason Anye. He looks like a pretty good player. Maybe he could be a guy for us in 2023. I wouldn't expect a lot from him now because Notre Dame has that core rotation of four guys now without Lacey, but look for Jason Anye to be a guy that's making those natural moves into maybe getting on the field in 2023. Rubio, eight snaps against North Carolina and 14 on the season. And in terms of his uh, statistics, don't think he's recorded one. Uh, and for folks wondering why Lacey entered – is entering the portal which he's getting his degree by the way which is fantastic i mean it, it comes down to how much you're playing i mean like why, why would you leave if you're playing a ton um so you also have to factor in that he can redshirt he's got two years of eligibility now he had to make this decision now to retain that one year if he stepped onto the field one time against yeah. byu in las vegas this saturday he'd lose a whole year so it's a business decision. You know, college football is a business at this point. Yeah. So, yeah, he has not redshirted. So this will be his redshirt year. Um, so, yep, good stuff there from Mr. Horka. Um, let's talk about the safety position. DJ Brown and Ramon Henderson, um, a little banged up, but they are good to go. Yeah, I saw Ramon Henderson on the field when I was down there at North Carolina, and he had a pretty – there's my dog again. Ollie, Ollie loves making his appearances. Birthday month now, so I'm not going to shoo him out. Um yeah, Ramon Henderson had a pretty heavy brace. I think it was on his right ankle. It doesn't really matter what ankle it was. It was a heavy brace, but he's practicing. DJ Brown, I think it was a hamstring issue that he went down with against North Carolina. He's practicing. So this, this Notre Dame safety unit is a, a unit that likes to rotate guys. We've seen it all over with the Notre Dame defense. Those guys have been getting on the field. You got to factor in Xavier Watts. Obviously, Brandon Joseph has been playing quite a bit, Houston Griffith. So, again, you have a handful of guys that like to play, that Notre Dame likes to play at that position, and those two were two of them. So you kind of left North Carolina thinking, oh, no, where's the depth at this position that has been really deep all year? Marcus Freeman kind of made people feel a little bit easier about that at his press conference today and saying those two guys are practicing, they're probably going to play. And, and guess what? They're probably going to play a lot because BYU likes to sling it around. Jaron Hall has been – but by my account, one of the best quarterbacks in college football this year. So I think if those two guys are healthy, which Freeman says they are, you see them play quite a bit on Saturday. Notre Dame's a three and a half point favorite, which I, I find interesting. I mean, BYU's, you know, what four and one number ranked number 16 in the country, Notre Dame two and two with a loss to Marshall. Um, just quickly, Tyler, you, we'll have this article up at blue and gold.com Friday morning, our game predictions, uh, VR staff, just kind of an early look at, you know, what, what you're thinking about for this game. Yeah, I'm thinking it's going to be not really what we watched against North Carolina where Notre Dame can do whatever it wants. But I think Notre Dame is going to do be able to do enough of what it wants to, to kind of control this thing. BYU, against the more competent or the more decent teams that they have on their schedule this year, that being Baylor and Oregon, both of those teams ran for over 200 yards against BYU. So I think that's going to be the MO for Notre Dame. Use Audrick Estime, use Chris Tyree, use Logan Diggs, help out Drew Pine a little bit in a game that is kind of quirky because you're playing in an NFL stadium and there's all this and that that goes into it. So from offensively speaking, that's going to be the key for Notre Dame. Then on the other side of the ball, I think Notre Dame is going to be able to stop the BYU run, but just how much is Jaron Hall going to be able to do through the air? Because BYU, sort of like North Carolina, has all of these weapons. If you look at their statistics, you're like, which one of these guys is their number one receiver? I think it's supposed to be Puka Nakua, but he's kind of been battling an injury and you're not sure if he's going to be at 100%. But then because of he's been injured, you see these other guys at the top of the list. If you look at their receiving statistics especially, and you're like, whoa, th this is a lot of guys to stop. But I think Notre Dame feels good about that because – North Carolina had the same thing. Josh Downs didn't play for a couple games there. And you had all these other guys catching passes from Drake May. And you're like, whoa, how are we going to stop these guys? Outside of what Antoine Green did there in the second half with a couple of big catches, Notre Dame did stop those guys. So, again, not totally the same situation as what Notre Dame faced against North Carolina, but similar. And you saw what Notre Dame was able to do against North Carolina on the road. 
I think Notre Dame is going to be in pretty good shape going into Saturday. Folks, blueandgold.com is your home for all Notre Dame football and recruiting coverage. Make sure you head over to the site um, and check out all of our content. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, of course, if you somehow have not done so yet. Hit the thumbs up on this video, and we'll catch you next time.